How's it going everybody? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Bedrock. Bedrock is a way of managing your WordPress site that I use on just about every site that I work on and I wanna show you why I do that. And hopefully it might alleviate some headaches that you might have with some of the workflows that it provides for you. I'm not only gonna be showing you that, but I'm also gonna be showing you how to get it set up with local by flywheel. That way you just have a very seamless, easy way to get up and running with a project like this. So I'm really excited about it. And if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so what the heck is Bedrock? Why should you care? Why does Alex use it? Why is he so hyped up about it? Let's start taking a look. I'm gonna walk you through all the different features and uh, I'm gonna show you how to get it up and running with a local by flywheel install and it's gonna be awesome and it's gonna change the way that you do WordPress development because it's definitely changed mine. So the first thing is, is that this tagline here just says it really well. It's a WordPress boilerplate with modern development tools, easier configuration and an improved folder structure. So what this isn't is it's not a plugin it's not a theme and it's not a compiler of any sorts. It's simply a way of setting up your WordPress projects so that things about that project are now easier. So I'm going to skip this first part because we're gonna come back to this, but I wanna talk about the folder structure because I feel like this highlights a lot of the niceties about setting up your WordPress project this way. The first thing is, is that you're gonna notice that there is a composer.json in here. All of the plugins, all of the themes, and any must use plugins, things like that are going to be managed through Composer. If you're not familiar with Composer, it's a PHP package manager, just like NPM is a JavaScript package manager. The next thing that you're gonna notice is we have a config here that has different PHP files for different environments. And this gives you a really nice way to say, hey, on different environments, I wanna make sure that my debugging is on. And so like, that's what you would put in this development.php is you would define the PHP constants like WP debug and set those to true because in development you want those and then you would set them to false here in production. And then you don't have to worry about it this uh, anymore. You don't have to set up a bunch of if statements and see what environment that you're on. It already has that for you. The next thing that you're gonna see is that the vendor folder is there. That's just where those things from the composer.json get, get plopped in. Anything that's not WordPress related, um, strictly speaking. Uh, the last folder that we have here contains a couple different things. I'm gonna start from the bottom. The bottom has the actual core installation of WordPress. So that is extracted out and it's not something that you're working inside of anymore, which is actually really nice. The second thing is that it has the wp-config.php and an index.php and those are just needed in order for WordPress to work because WordPress will like try and look for those, those files inside of this WP folder. It's not gonna find them, but it'll go up a directory and look for those there. So they're kind of there out of necessity for how WordPress works. But then that in turn, wp-config.php will then load in these configuration files up here. Then lastly is kind of the meat of it, is the app folder. And that's what you're going to be working out of. That's where your must use plugins, your plugins, your themes, and all your uploads are gonna go. And so that's where you're actually going to be working. So hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea and hopefully you can start to kind of put the pieces together and connect the dots about why this kind of setup is nice. So like we said, dependency management with Composer, we talked a little bit about that and I will show actual examples about how this works here in a moment. Easier WordPress configuration, it's gonna use environment files, so .env files that manage, well, what does the database connection information look like on this environment versus this environment? And it's something that's tracked outside of Git, which is really nice. And then enhanced security, it comes with a couple little plugins and the main one that they like to highlight here is WP password bcrypt, which just makes it so when you are registering new users, that password is passed through bcrypt, which is a little bit better than what WordPress does by default. So let's actually jump into creating a, uh, a site here. 
So I'm going to close out of that. If you need composer, get composer.org slash download. But then I'm going to use local by flywheel. If you're not, if you don't care about this part, go ahead and skip. But local by flywheel is a great little tool to help you get up and running with just WordPress sites in general. And there is a way to get this working with a bedrock structure. So we're going to have uh, this free download here. I've already downloaded it. Um, if you watch my other tutorials, I use this all the time. Um, and so I'm going to open up local by flywheel and I'm going to drag it in over here and we're going to create a new site and we're just going to call this bedrock and everything is looking good here. It's going to be called bedrock.local. We're going to continue. We're going to do custom. We're going to do, let's just do PHP. Now nah, let's just keep it like that. Nginx is fine. PHP ver or MySQL version is fine. And then my username is Alex, password is Alex, and we're going to add the site. So as this is provisioning, it's going to ask me for my password, which I will give it. And then it's going to spin up this new site for us. All right. And now that it's done that, we now have a folder here in home slash local site slash bedrock. So we're going to go over to my terminal here. And if we were to just list out what we see in here, we've got a couple sites. So we're going to go CD into bedrock, clear that out. And we're going to list out those again. So we have three folders here, app config and logs. So let's go into the app directory and we have a public folder. And so what we need to do next is we need to go back to uh, oh, let's see. Oh, we got to go back to roots.io slash bedrock because I accidentally closed it. And then we grab a uh, composer create project slash root slash bedrock. So inside of here, inside of our app folder, we're going to run that command and that's going to go out and grab bedrock and it's going to grab all of the dependencies that we talked about, like the dot env stuff and the, and, um, the bcrypt stuff and all that. So it's going to install that. So we clear that and we list out these directories. Now we have bedrock and we have public. So what we want to do is remove public. We don't care about that anymore because that's the default one that uh, they give you with local by flywheel. So we're going to clear that out and we're going to open this up in our code. And so now we just have our bedrock folder. Actually, you know what? I went too deep over here. So we actually need to go up a directory. And now we need to open this up in code. And so we need to go into our config file and we need to go to our nginx file and we need to go into our site.conf. And instead of it looking for root slash app slash public, it should look for app slash bedrock slash web. Because if we remember, our web folder actually has our index.php, it has our WP config, and it has our actual site. So we want Nginx to know about that. The other thing that we want to change inside of here is that we want it to use our information that we set up in flywheel. So we want to say that the database name is local, which that's what local sets it to. And then the username and password will be root and root. And then our home and site URL are going to look like this, where we set up our bedrock.local domain in local by flywheel. So that's what we want to set it up to be as well. So the only other caveat to this is we have to go back and we have to right click it and restart it because we made a change to Nginx. So all of that aside, this is entirely dependent on your local setup. If you're using something like Docker or MAMP, this is going to look obviously different to you, but this is the way that I do it. So now that's done, we can click on view site here. Well, actually, let's just visit it directly. So I'm going to go to bedrock.local. And we're going to let it sit for a second while it kind of spins up, but we should see nothing. Oh no. Why do we see nothing? Well, there's a very good reason for that. If we were to visit our web folder, our app and our themes, we get a whole lot of nothing in there. So there's nothing for it to show us. So if we go to uh, back to our browser and we do slash WP slash WP dash admin, 
why do we do dep slash wp slash wp admin? Well, let's look at that folder structure again. That's where WordPress lives. That's where we're going to need to type in. So it adds a little bit of extra security, which is nice. People can't just visit WP admin and, ex and expect it to work the same way. So we do Alex and Alex here. And we have our WordPress site. We have our themes, which we don't have anything there. It's looking for 2020, but we don't have it. And we can start creating pages. We could technically install plugins, but this isn't where we're going to install plugins. And I'll explain that in just one second. But now you can start setting up some of the basic stuff. But you know, WordPress, we need plugins and themes. So let's start there. So if we clear this out and look at where we are, we need to go into our app folder. And we need to see, we need to go into Bedrock. And then we have our composer.json. So we have our composer JSON, and this is where we're going to start using um, the magic of composer to install plugins and themes. So if we go back to our uh, browser and we look up wordpress.org slash plugins, we have our plugin repositories that we're very used to uh, working with. So you can search for WordPress SEO and you get Yoast, right? And you can go in here, you can download it, you can drag it into the folder, and, and yeah, you, you have WordPress SEO. You can go into the back end here, and you can search for it there. So what uh, the where Composer comes in in here is that there is another site called wpackagist.org. And what this is, is this is a mirror of the plugin and theme repository that the repositories that WordPress has. So if we were to look for WordPress SEO here, we will see that there is a result for WordPress SEO. It tells us what versions there are, when it was last committed, when it was last fetched. And if we were to open that up into a new tab, we can confirm that that's the, the, the package that we're actually looking for. And so how you would go about actually installing this plugin is if we go back to our hyper terminal here, clear this out, we can do composer require, which is like npm install. Then you would do wpackagist-plugin, since we're installing a plugin, slash WordPress SEO, the name or slug of that plugin. So then you can hit enter on that and it will go out to wp or wpackagist.org it's going to find the WordPress SEO plugin, and then it's going to bring it back um, through Composer. And so inside of our Composer package, or composer.json, if I open that up real quick, if we scroll down, it knows what to do with certain types of packages. So our must use plugins need to go into our web app must use plugins. It's same thing for pl uh, regular plugins. It needs to go into the plugins folder. Same thing for themes, like they need to go into the themes folder. So Composer knows where to put these items because uh, Bedrock has given them a path when it sees the type that's coming through. So hopefully that makes sense. So we're gonna go back and see if it finished. It finished, we got our um, plugin installed. It updated our lock file. And so if we go over back to our code here, we have our plugins directory and lo and behold, we have WordPress SEO. And if we go back to our plugins page and we check out installed plugins, we have Yoast SEO. So that's great, but we still don't have a theme. So it's looking for 2020. So let's just install 2020 real quick. And it's going to be roughly the same process. We do composer uh, require W packagist theme, and then we're going to do 2020. And we're going to, and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go out to um, W packagist and it's going to uh, grab 2020. So if we go back here, we can see that our themes now has 20, oh, that's 2019. Let's go straight down to 2020 right here. So we can click activate, and now we have 2020. So really awesome. Now we have 2020 inside of our folder here. So if we go to plugins and themes, we can now start working with 2020 and we can start editing it like normal. So 
this is just such a great way to work in my opinion because now you if you were to think about this with like a git workflow or something like that well most of us use like continuous integration systems or you can use like github actions or something and say like hey anytime that i uh like deploy my site or something like that pull in 2020 pull in wordpress seo and those are now like one line in your composer.json versus you're having to version track inside of your repository every single file that comes in through plugins and themes and stuff like that. You can now pull in all of these public ones. Private ones are another thing that I'll get into in another video. If you want, leave a comment below if that's something you want me to get into. But anyway, this is just a broad, broad overview of kind of like what my WordPress workflow looks like. This is where I start like 99% of the time. So if you liked the video, if you learned something, leave a comment below, like the video, tell your friends, whatever. Uh, but I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the support and I will catch you guys in the next one.